Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Daggett. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to draw a Japanese style dragon head. Uh, this is something that was requested. It's also something that I struggled with uh, drawing in the beginning. It can be pretty difficult to sort of figure it out yourself. Dragon heads uh, or dragons in general are pretty complicated characters and they've got a lot going on, a lot of different elements going on. So we're going to go straight to the overhead. I'm going to show you guys how to draw a dragon head. Let's go. Okay guys, as I said, we're back at the table and today we're going to be doing a Japanese style dragon head. So with Japanese dragons and that, there is a fair bit of detail that goes into them and the heads can be customized. So you can do all sorts of different expressions, different style whiskers, different style eyes, all sorts of things. And uh, you can be really creative with it. It's quite fun. So we're using Fabriano hot press watercolor paper as usual. Today we're starting in the in a landscape orientation and I'll just be going in with a mechanical pencil for all of my sketch layers. Okay, so to start off, we're going to do a circle. This will mark a position for the general shape of our head. And we're going to do a smaller circle off to the left and a little bit below the halfway mark. Now coming from the top of the circle, we're going to draw in a line for our center, a curved line for our center. So our dragon's facing in this direction. And we're going to emulate that line on the smaller circle as well. This gives us a clear picture of where the center of his face is. From here, you're gonna come across and draw in a line for the eyes. So we're gonna do a curved line that comes across like this. And on that line, you're gonna draw two smaller circles, which will be where our eyes sit. Coming from here, you're gonna draw a curved line underneath the nose. It should cut off the very bottom part of the nose, but not too much. Coming back to this line here, we're going to draw in a semicircle, about that big. That's going to be the placeholder for our ear. Underneath this eye, you're going to do an oval like this. This gives us our cheek muscle and the bottom of our jawline down here. And directly down and slightly to the left, you're going to draw another small circle or oval, sorry. And this will be your dragon's bottom draw. You want to link the bottom draw and this oval. Just with a curved line like that. So you can sort of see how this is all coming together. These are all of our foundation shapes. You can pretty much see that 99% of this is circles and then a few curved lines, which is parts of a circle. So most of this is pretty easy and straightforward to put together. At this point, we just want to put in some rough shape for some horns. In this case, we're just going to do some real short little horns. Generally, I'll do these a lot larger. So one cone shape just behind the ear. And the other one just behind the top of the head. Okay, this one will be angled outwards and this one will be angled a little bit more upright. From here, we can actually start adding some of our details or at least some of our more complex shapes. Uh, coming into where the nose is, we're going to start by adding in two smaller circles to give us a general idea of where our nostrils are. They're more like oval shapes than circles. Coming up from here, we're going to follow our circle shape up to a little peak and then bring it back down adding a little bit of variance to the shape of the line. So it's still a curved line, but it dips in about here and dips back down there and flicks out. And this will give the nose a bit of shape. From here, we're gonna add in our nostril. So we're doing sort of like a little peanut shape and we're leaving this edge open. And then from behind that, we're going to come up and add a nostril, the outside of the nostril. 
we'll do the same thing on the other side just remember that you'll see a little bit less of it because it's sort of hidden on that side of the face it's on a different angle I'm gonna do the bridge of the nose here so from just before you ended the this curved line you're gonna come off And do a bump like that it's sort of like when you were when you're a kid and you draw those little birds like that you want to do that just there and then above it we'll do a little wavy line a little wavy line just like that from here what we're gonna do is add our eyebrows in or our eyebrow bone so coming from about here you're going to draw a curve that intersects with this small circle here. It stops at the edge of the circle and you come back about half a centimetre and do another little line like that. From there you can do a couple of small circles or curves coming off of that one. And again intersecting and then leading off like that from here we can start to define the shape of our eyes a little bit more so we're going to come down like this and make them a little bit more oval shaped like this and when it comes towards the front you just want to add a little loop like that for the other eye, you're going to come down and in like that, cutting it off a little bit more. From the outside of this left eye here, we're just going to draw a line straight down like that. Now jumping back down to the nose, we're going to put in our whiskers or our moustache. And to do this, we're going to go from our center point there. And we're going to drop in a line and from that line we're going to put in a curve that comes down and wraps around the back of the nostril the other way to do it which I like doing is to drop it down and put a few lines there like that okay indicate that there's some uh, bunched up hair or flesh in that area we go ahead and do the same thing on this side From underneath I'm gonna come from our center point out a little bit and then you can add your whiskers in now you can do straight whiskers curved whiskers sharp a little bit more rounded depending on how you like to do it I like mine to be a little bit more curved so that's what we're gonna do here I'm gonna bring a line out curve it back in so you're gonna create these little peaks And curve them back in and you're gonna come around your little mustache shape all the way around and you want to do the same thing on the other side From here you're going to do basically the exact same thing you did with the whiskers around the nose uh, onto the eyebrows so I'll show you we'll start this one here we're going to come down and do a little curved line and then we're going to continue doing this the way up and around the eyebrow to create the shape of the eyebrow And we'll do the same thing on the other side. From here we're going to add a simple line in for the uh, top of the head. So starting from where behind the horn would be, we're going to come up. Create a little bit of a peak. And drop that line down. And then coming from the other side of that peak, 
we're just going to do a little wavy line just like that okay and I might do some circles or ovals on top of the head and this will be a bit of a pattern later on just to give it a little bit of texture okay so to do our ear what we're going to do is start at the base of our semicircle or the, the first edge of our semicircle here and do a curved line that comes up like that it's going to curve at the end and then sort of bump on the way back in then starting from this end again we can follow our shape up adding a little loop at the end so this is just a wavy line with a little loop and from the inside of the ear you add these little curved lines that sort of flick off at the end okay and that'll give us a pretty basic general shape for our ear I just want to widen that up a little bit so from here we're going to put in the shape of our long whiskers and then the bottom jaw. So coming in from just behind the nose here, we'll do a little loop and a line. And we're basically gonna bring that line out around like a little loop here and back under. These can be as long as you want or as short as you want. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. And then we're just going to double up on that line, tapering it right down to the end. Okay, so starting onto the bottom jaw, this shape here will be our teeth. So from just below that shape, you're going to draw in the bottom lip, which will be a curved line just like that. And we double up on that line. I like to leave a little break in the middle there come out and we're going to put in a bit of a chin just like that and then from the outside of the lip we're going to copy our whiskers okay so from this point we can actually go ahead and draw in the placing for our teeth uh, this guy's got a bit of an underbite so the top teeth we're going to draw a little semicircle in for them and that curve there is for the bottom teeth. And we'll go ahead and put the bottom teeth in first because they'll most likely be in front for this one. So we're gonna start at the very end here and throw in a big curved tooth like that. And then we're gonna come down and put in these little curved diamond shapes for the other teeth. And then at the very end, another big curved sort of canine tooth. The teeth above it are going to follow the exact same format. I'm going to come down, doing a nice big curved tooth, and then following that, our smaller curved diamond shaped teeth. Now you want to add another long whisker just behind. So coming in behind the nose here, just imagine where it's coming from and bring this guy out from behind there. Put a little loop in and taper it off. Okay, so from here, we're going to start working on the cheek and the jaw area. Just underneath the eye, you're going to put in a couple little bumps this will indicate our cheek or the flesh part of the cheek and then starting at the back here we can put in some of our whiskers now you want these ones to be quite large and we're just doing these really rough you can change these later on we're going to do it a line imaginary line from the mouth to back around this area and when we get there we're gonna put in a nice big curve 
for a back tooth. And a little curved loop like that. That loop can come down. You can put in another tooth. And you keep bringing it forward until you reach the mouth where it connects, which it connects behind these whiskers, so you're pretty safe there. Here's from behind these whiskers. It's all sort of hidden behind whiskers and hair and that, so it's not too difficult. Uh, we're gonna bring a line that comes through here. And then draw in a few more whiskers. It's simple as that to join those two. Last but not least, we're gonna do the horns. So at the base of the horns, I want to do some pretty rough sort of shape and then come straight up and adding a bit of a shake to our line to give it that rough organic sort of bone look okay you can do them however you'd like if you want these to be super smooth and really sharp you can do that and if you want them to be a little bit less smooth and make them look a little bit more bony and jagged you can do what I've done here you can add little thorns to them. This is up to you guys. It's a mythical creature. You can play around with it and make it look however you like. Texturing the horns is going to be pretty straightforward. You're basically going to do a little squiggle that leads off into a tray line. So you're going to come off like this and then trail it off. A little squiggle and then trail it off. Okay, so we have the rough sketch of our dragon head done. I think it looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and ink this one now. You guys pretty much already know how I ink things, so I'm not going to go into depth with it today. I'm just going to go through and ink this quickly so we can get onto the coloring stage. But if you'd like to see a video explaining the ink inking process or my inking process in a little more detail, please do let me know in the comments down below. I can go over it in more detail, but I think it's pretty straightforward. As usual, I'm using these Artline drawing system fine liners. I've said in previous videos I've used Copic multi-liners and all sorts of different fine liners. It doesn't matter um, as long as you're comfortable what you're using. Uh, this one's a 0.5. That will be for most of the line work. I'll also be using a 0.8 for boosting and uh, thickening up some of those lines to create some depth. And a 0.3 will be used for the finer details and just little texturing things that I want to add at the later stage. So I'm going to go through and ink this now, and I'll see you in the next part of the video. Okay guys, the line work is complete and I've gone ahead and erased all of the pencil lines. We're gonna go ahead and shade and color this one now. As usual, we're using an Ecoline black brush pen to do our shading and my little watercolor brush. So grab yourself a brush and your black and we'll go ahead and do the shading. The coloring and shading for this one can be a little bit complicated depending on you know how you want it to look. Um, but for the most part, the shading is pretty straightforward. Um, you're pretty much just putting black in the darkest places and then uh, blending it out so the same way that you shade pretty much anything else. Okay, so starting down in this area where the nose is, we're going to do a little bit of black inside the nostril to get, give it a little bit of darkness and we'll just blend that out. Like that. You can do the same thing in the top of the other nostril there. And blend that out as well. 
For the nose itself, I'm going to put a little shadow in here where the lip meets. And we just blend that out. Just behind the nose, main part of the nose here. We can add a little bit of shading as well. And then again, just behind that. Now underneath our eyebrows will be a little bit darker. So we'll go ahead and put in some nice heavy black shadows there. And then come in with our watercolor brush. Blending those parts out a little bit. And we're going to do some from behind the nostril here as well. On the inside of the mouth here, we're going to do black from the back of the mouth. Just like that. Blend it forward a little bit. We're going to come in from just behind these whiskers here as well. black and then blending that out to white coming up to the area just behind the uh, eyebrow here we're going to do some black in there again blending that out to white and in the space above it and in the spaces just below it also just underneath the left eyebrow we're going to do a little bit of black here. And just blend that out. Do the same thing from behind the head here as well. And we'll also do that just behind the crease in the center of the head. head and do a little bit of shading up behind the whiskers at the back of the mouth here that go into the ear. And I might do a little bit behind the cheek as well. From here we're going to do a little bit of shading underneath this top lip. Going in behind these bottom whiskers, I'm going to do a little bit of shading like this. And just barely blending that out to a dark grey. This will be sort of our darkest area. I can come in and blend that out. And then at the very bottom of the bottom jaw on the chin, To shade the horns, I'm going to keep this pretty simple, there's lots of ways to do it. I'm going to do solid black on the back of the horn and blend it out to white. I'll flip my page to do it. I'll come in and do a bit of a rough shape like that. I'll just take my brush pen and try to get a nice smooth blend from black out to white. So as you can see, the dragon head is pretty much shaded. You could leave it as is. It's a pretty nice black and gray design, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit of a background element and then we'll start coloring. So to do the background piece, I'm just gonna take a spare piece of watercolor paper and add a nice thick coat of my black. And we're gonna use this as sort of like a little makeshift palette that we can dip our watercolor brush into to get a nice sort of gray tone. I'm gonna come in just behind the dragon here and start putting in a little swirl. Dipping back into the black when necessary. And we're gonna blend in like a little swirl like that. 
and these are just some sort of cloudy cloudy little background elements so I'm going to go through and quickly add the rest of those in and then we can start coloring at this point we're finished with all of our black shading and I've done the little background piece I wanted to add in there I think it looks pretty cool like I said you could leave this as a black and gray design we are going to add some colors though so I'm going to go ahead and show you how we do that now I'm going to start with the horns because we're using some Copic colors for those so I'm going to be using a Carib Coco or if you use Copic markers that's an E25 so I don't usually use Copic markers um, normally I use Liquitex acrylic inks and they're very mixable so I can sort of mix whatever colors I'd like to use uh, but if I'm using the Ecoline brush pens and I'm, I'm lacking a color sometimes I'll just use a Copic marker or a pencil if I've got one laying around so we're just going to use this for the horns and go straight over the top of our shading. I'm also using a Copic Dark Brown. This is an E, Let's see if we can get it to focus. It's an E47, it's not gonna do it for me. It's an E47 and we're gonna go in and add a little bit more shading to certain parts and just darken them. I Kinda just wanna add a bit of darker brown to those textured parts to give them a little bit more depth. For the whiskers, I'm gonna be using an Ecoline Deep Yellow uh, brush pen, and there's no shading for this. I'm just gonna go in and basically color solid yellow for all of the whiskers, and not the long whiskers. They're gonna stay blank for now. I'm just gonna go through and do all of the beard, the eyebrows, and the mustache, and I'll see you in the next part of the video. We'll leave this out for time's sake. Once you've added yellow to all of the whiskers, we're going to come down to these long whiskers and put a little bit of yellow just in the tips of them. Like that. We're going to do the teeth now. We're also using Copic markers for these. I think we're going to use a milky white and a sand white. So that's an E51 and an E42. You can find whatever colors work best for you. Sometimes I'll just use yellow for the teeth, but it depends on the look I'm going for. I'll just go ahead with these ones and quickly color in the teeth. And then add a little layer of shadow using the darker color. From here, we're going to be using a little bit of red. So we're using an Ecoline brush pen. This is a scarlet red and we're going to go in and do the inside of the mouth and we're also going to do the eyes in this red color and probably the gums as well okay the next color we're using for this is an ecoline brush pen in carmine so this is sort of like a pink color and we're going to use this for the inside <clears throat> sorry we're going to use this for the inside of the nostrils and the inside of the ear and i'll also use it for the lips so coming up to the inside of the ear, we'll color that in pink or carmine. And then I'm just gonna wanna take my brush pen and blend the edges of that out a little bit, just to soften them. We're gonna come back in with the Eco Line Scarlet because I did forget to do something and that was the eyes. Uh, we're gonna do something a bit interesting with the eyes here. We're basically going to shade red from all the outside and leave the center of the eye white. And coming in from the outside of the eyes with our red or our scarlet. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is use a Ecoline Deep Green. You can use any green that you'd like and we're going to go ahead and color all of the skin in that green tone. Anywhere that you want to leave a bit of a highlight, just leave a white gap and you can either leave a solid highlight or you can blend it out to white using your brush pen. For these little spots, we'll probably leave those for now and go back over them after, either in a different color or using our green and sort of lightening it. So for now, we'll just go through and do all of the skins and we'll come back and finish this guy off.
Okay guys, we're finished with most of the coloring. I made a few last minute changes, which I'll explain now. Basically what I've done is I've colored straight over the top of those little circles and uh, the texture circles. And I've made the eyebrow ridge a red color, uh, similar to the eyes. I want to have a little bit of a glowing effect to it. And uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to do now using a white gel pen. I'm just going to come in and outline those circles. So we're just going to come into these small circles we did. And add a little ring of our white gel pen to them. And this will sort of help make them pop. Now for the eyes, we're going to do something a little bit different. I've colored them in that sort of solid red, leaving a little bit of white. We're now going to take our gel pen and we're going to draw a swirl. In the center of our eye, just like that. Um, I like to do this sometimes. I think it makes the dragon look a little bit crazy and like he's charged with a little bit of energy. So we're going to do the swirl in his eyes. And then you could even do some little bits of lightning or something coming out of his eyes. Just some energy. Okay guys, that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I would like to give you some examples of dragons that I've drawn just to show you that it is a style thing. You can change the way the dragon looks entirely with just a few simple modifications to what I've shown you. I've just shown you the real basic sort of structure and groundwork to creating a dragon head. But uh, on the this example, for example, is one that I drew not too long ago. And you can see that the horns, I've changed a little bit with the horns, added some details and made them look a little bit more uh, rough and menacing, I think. And I've added a tongue that's poking out on this one. So I've added all these different elements to them and that's what really gives them different characteristics and makes them look different from each other. So you can use the same foundation, the same structural work uh, and build upon it using different elements to make them look different. Alright guys, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you want to see next time, um, what tutorial you want to see or what kind of art challenge you want to see. And other than that, just hit the subscribe button to stay in touch and see more great content. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know, I am on Facebook over at Daggett Designs. So head on over to my Facebook page, hit the follow and the like button so that you can stay up to date with my online portfolio, any upcoming work, and pretty much everything else that's going on related to this channel. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Look after yourselves and happy drawing. Alright, bye.